Quran with the Basmala, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. And also the Prophet, whenever he would send his companions on a mission to give letters to other, other rulers such as Hiraq uh, al-Azim al-Rum, um, the ruler Hercules, from Hercules the Great, from uh, the Romans, he will start off by writing Bismillah rahman rahim And also, um, Sulaiman alayhi salam, when he would send a letter to uh, the people of Saba, he would say, Innahu min Sulaiman wa innahu Bismillah rahman rahim So the Basmala is, it means that whatever you do, you seek Allah's blessings in it, or you seek His help, you seek His assistance. Abtadi'u qara'ati musta'inan billah. Whatever I am doing, I start it with the blessings of Allah. So, the, so whatever, whenever you start an occasion or whenever you start something, you should always say Bismillah. And we're recommended, we're advised, and it is from the Sunnah to say Bismillah in many things. When I walk into the message, we say Bismillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. Allahumma ftahli abab rahmatik. When we're leaving the masjid, and again we say Bismillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. Allahumma asimni min al shaytan al rajim. Allahumma ani asaluka min fadlik. Allahumma asimni min al shaytan al rajim. So remember these duas, my brothers and sisters. When we're eating, we start by saying Bismillah. And we eat with our right hand. When we're drinking, we start by saying Bismillah. When we're. Um, when we're having relations with our spouses, we, say, we start by saying Bismillah. When we're using the toilets, we start by saying Bismillah. The Messenger والسلام, tells us, Inna shaytana yahduru ahadukum fi kulli sha'nihi. That verily shaytan, he comes to you in all your affairs. So whenever you say Bismillah, then he leaves, then he runs away. So remember this. And Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. Ar-Rahman. This is the sifa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that He is the most gracious, that all rahmah belongs to Him, the mercy, the merciful. And He is merciful and most kind to whatever is on the planet, whatever is on the earths and the heavens, the angels, the jinns, the creatures, the human beings. Ar-Rahim, the most merciful, and He is most merciful and ever, ever kind and merciful to the believers. وَكَانَ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَحِيمًا And he is all and constantly merciful to those that believe in him. Then the author, he begins by saying, Hamza, you want to read? Inshallah. No mic? Khalas. Read without mic, Adi. Inshallah, we'll read the book and go over from the beginning. From top, from top. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين العذاب العشرة. قال المصنف حفظه الله تعالى اعلم هداني الله وإياك لأحسن الأخلاق أن من أعظم الآداب العشرة You should know, may Allah guide me and you to the best of character, the most tremendous of mannerisms are ten. الأول إذا لقيت مسلما فسلم عليه قائلا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وإن سلم عليك فقل وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته if you come upon a Muslim, give them salam, greetings of peace, saying, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon you. If you are greeted with salam, reply, and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon you. Bismillah, alhamdulillah. Before we go on to the text, um, again, we've taken this last week. We're just doing a quick review. I want to remind my brothers and sisters the importance of writing. The importance of writing what you have. Because when you write, you're able to... Um, understand and know 90% of what's being said because you look back at it and then you revise whereas if you're just listening and you're benefiting la bas, no problem with that but we want to write and we want to benefit inshallah the poets they used to say al-ilmu saydun wa wal-kitabatu qayduhu the ilm knowledge is like hunting and writing 
is like the, the thing that you capture, the hunting, whatever you're hunting with. And they would say, قَيِّدْ سُيُودَكَ بِالْحِبَالِ بِالْحِبَالِ الْوَاثِقَةِ And capture whatever you're hunting with a good grasp. And it is not from the best that whatever you capture, you leave it untied. So when you capture something, you want to tie it up. So you can later on prepare the meal and maybe cook it. And this is the same goes to knowledge as well. You want to capture it, write it down, and then later on maybe look back over it in due time. طيب. The author begins, he begins the text by saying, اعلم هداني الله إياك. Um, Know that may Allah guide me and you. So he starts off by making a dua for himself and you. Uh, may Allah guide you and I to the best of character. إِنَّ مِنْ أَعْظَمِ الْآدَابِ عَشَرَةِ And this is from, from, from the sunnah of the scholars. Whenever they will write a book, they will make dua for themselves and the person reading it. أَسَلَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَلَىٰ أَنْ يَتَوَلَّاكَ In other, in other books that we've seen, I ask Allah to guide you and I, I ask Allah to correct you and I, I ask Allah to, 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 to make us of those that are good. And he says, إِنَّ مِنْ أَعْظَمِ الْآدَابِ عَشَرَةِ And from the tremendous, from the most greatest of adab are ten. Mannerism. Mannerism in Islam are many, but these ten, they come around on a day-to-day basis. All right? The first one is, إِذَا لَقِيْتَ مُسْلِمًا فَسَلِّمْ عَلَيْهِ that if you meet and greet your Muslim brother, you should pray, you should say salam to them. Qailan saying, Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa in salama alayka faqul wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And perhaps again, the author, he got this from the hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and found it in, in Sahih al-Muslim, in, in, in the Imam Muslim's collection. On the authority of Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu, where the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "Haqul Muslimi al Muslimi situn," that the rights of a Muslim to another Muslim is six, and one of them is that when you see, when you greet them, you return the salam. When you greet them, and they say "Salamu alaykum" to you, you should respond, or you have to respond. It is become becomes wajib alaik. It becomes mandatory upon you to respond by saying "Wa alaykum salam," and "Assalamu alaykum salam" is on three levels. It has three levels. We mentioned this last week. The first level is that you say Assalamu Alaikum. The second level is that you say Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah. And the third level is that you should say Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah wa Barakatuh. All three are okay. And the third level is the best because that is the most rewarding. Tayyip. Again, a bit about the Salam. The Salam, it has many significance, it has many virtues. And from amongst the virtues, is that it, is, it brings love, mahabba, between the Muslims. It brings love and mahabba between the Muslims. And the Messenger والسلام, tells us that we will not enter Jannah until we believe. لا تدخلوا الجنة حتى تؤمنوا ولن تؤمنوا حتى تحابوا And that you will not enter Jannah again until you love one another. أَلَا أَدُلُّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ إِذَا فَعَلْتُمُوهُ تَحَابَبْتُمْ Should I tell you a thing that if you, if you were to do often, that you will love one another? And he said, أَفْشُ salam, Spread the salam amongst each other. Make the salam very apparent. Make it a thing that is light from the tip of your tongue. طيب. Again, it is also from the easy rewards. It is also from the easy rewards. A very small act that goes a million miles. And it is one of the first things that the Prophet ﷺ called to when he was in Medina. He gathered the people of Medina and he said, أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ أَطْعِمُ الطَّعَامِ وَأَفْشُ السَّلَامِ وَصَلُّوا بِاللَّيْلِ وَالنَّاسُ نِيَامِ تَدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةَ بِسَلَامِ O people, feed the poor amongst you. Give, spread the salam amongst each other. Wake up at night. In the early mornings for prayer, يعني صلاة الليل صلاة قيام الليل, and you will enter Jannah with ease. With ease. So this is the easy way of entering Jannah by doing salams very often and these other noble acts. Also, my brothers, from amongst the virtues and significance of salam, it is that, is that, it is one of the things the Ahlul Kitab were very jealous of at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu They never believed in him for, due to many actions. Due to many things. And one of the things, especially the Yahud, قَاتَلَهُمُ اللَّهِ May Allah destroy them. 
for what they are doing to our brothers and sisters in Palestine and the likes of them and those that support them, one of their, one of their deeds, one of the things that they used to hate the Muslims for was the assalam. And again, the messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, says, ما حسدتكم اليهود على شيء ما حسدتكم على السلام والتأمين The Jews have not become very envy of you. Except that when you give salams amongst each other and the ameen as well. The ameen. Whenever we're praying, whenever the imam, he recites Surah Fatiha, and in the crowd, they say ameen. And in a place like this, or even a bigger masjid, or even... In the Haramain, Mecca and Medina, you can hear the Ameen from very far. And this is something that they never used, they used, to, they used to hate. And this is something that they were very envious of. So spread the Salam. Spread the Salam, my brothers. <coughs> طيب. The manners and etiquettes of Salam. Who gives Salam to who first? The one that gives Salam to the person first, whom awla billah, as the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that the one that gives salams first, he's the closer to Allah. So who's, clo- who's the closest to Allah? The one that gives salams first. طيب. Then there's the way to greet the salam. Who is it, recommend- who is it obliged upon? And who is it um, recommended upon? طيب. Whenever we give salams, we know that the young should greet the older. The young should greet the older. And then we know that the passing by the one that is passing by walking should greet the one sitting. The one that is entering a place should greet the one sitting. And the lesser group should greet the greater group. The lesser people greet the greater group. And the one that is riding should greet the one that is walking. This is from the correct adab and the etiquettes of giving salam. Athani, إِذَا أَرَدْتَ الدُّخُولَ عَلَىٰ أَحَدٍ فَاسْتَأْذِنْ واقفا عن يمين الباب أو يساره فإن أذن لك دخلت وإن قيل لك ارجع فارجع Number two, if you wish to enter upon someone then seek their permission standing to the right side of the door or the left if you are given permission, enter and if it is said to you go back, then go back طيب, The second etiquette that the um, Sheikh mentions is the etiquette of visiting the manners of, of visiting and this is in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's verse where he says, Ya ayu al-ladhina amanu, la tadkhulu buyutan ghayra buyutikum hatta tasta'nisu wa tusallimu ala ahliha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing the believers, those that have a full iman, that do not enter a house other than your own house. So when you enter your own house, you don't have to give, you don't have to seek permission. You should give salam, but you don't have to seek permission because it's your own house. You have the keys to it. And when you're entering a house that's other than yours, you should knock. You should knock, your, knock and say, Assalamu Alaikum. By knocking, you're making yourself apparent. By knocking, you're making yourself apparent. Perhaps that is better for you, that you will be reminded and advised. طيب. So, a dukhul, as we said last week, is an entrance to a place. So, if you're entering a masjid, it's recommended to say, Assalamu Alaikum. But you don't have to knock because the masjid is open. If you're entering a supermarket or a mall, you just enter and you don't have to say assalamu alaikum. But if you're entering someone's house, you need to seek permission first before saying assalamu alaikum. And by seeking permission, you knock. And then you knock three times. And the sunnah is that you should knock three times. And the wisdom behind it, the scholars again, they say the first time you're making yourself apparent. Istitnas. You're letting the people know that you've come. That's the first knock. The second knock is that you're informing the people that you're there and you're letting them make a decision. And it's their choice, whoever's inside the house. Should they receive you or should they ignore you? And the third knock, and if no one opens, that's a sign for you to go back and return. Even if you know that they're inside. Right? If it is said to you to go back and return, then go back and return. That is better for you. And if you're, and then when you're knocking in someone's house, you should stand waqifan an yamini libab or yasariha. You should stand on the left side or the right side of someone's house, not squarely, 
right in front. فَإِنْ أَذِنْ لَكَ دَخَلْتَ So if you sought permission, then you should go inside. وَإِنْ قِيلَ لَكَ إِرْجِعْ فَارْجِعْ And if you're given, and if you're told to go back, then go back. There's a couple of points that I want to mention um, regarding this, just very quickly, is that there are times that you should visit someone, and there are times where you shouldn't visit someone. And this again is mentioned in Surah An-Nur, in the verse, of, in the verse, verse 58. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayu alladina amanu, liyastadinukum alladina malakat aymanukum, walladina lam yablugu al huluma minkum thalatha marat. Min kabli, salat al fajri, wahina tadauna thiabakum, min al zahirati, wa min badi salat al isha. So these three times is are times where it is not advised to visit people. The first time is min kabli salat al fajr, before the dawn prayer, in the early mornings, in the AMs. It is not advised to visit someone's house and go there unexpectedly. I mean, if you're expecting someone and if you have something on, emergency or whatever, that's fine. But unexpectedly showing up to someone's house before the Fajr prayer, it is not advised. This is in between the Dhuhr prayer and the Asr prayer. In most Muslim majority countries, work is from 7 a.m. to about 1 p.m. Or maybe even 6 a.m. to about 1 p.m. around there. That is, what, that is work time. After that, people are resting. Right? Because uh, this time it's very hot. The sun is out. It's burning. Um, people like to go home and just rest. People like to take qaylula, perhaps a nap. This time as well, it is not advised to do. But then again, things always go back to the urf, the, the, the norms and the customs of the people. Over here, we work at that time. 9 to 5 is our working hours. So if you're visiting people between Dhuhr and Asr and you're expecting them or, or you're going to see someone, then it's not, it's, 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 it's okay. But we're talking about um, at the times of, time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and modern day Muslim countries. Um, and also, after Salat al-Isha, min ba'di Salat al-Isha. After the Isha prayer, people like to go home, relax and sleep. Or maybe spend quality time with their spouses. Nobody likes to be, visit, be visited or be bothered at this time. So it is not advised to show up at people's house at this time. Taib. <coughs> then we come to the mas'ala of giving salams. The mas'ala of giving salams. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِذَا دَخَلْتُمْ بُيُوتًا فَسَلِّمُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِكُمْ تَحِيَّةً مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ مُبَارَكَةً طَيِّبَةً Again in Surah An-Nur. When you enter a house, give greetings upon each other. Say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. And then again, the Messenger, alayhi salatu salam, he was teaching his companions, namely Anas ibn Malik, who was his servant, his errand boy, who used to do his errands for him. He said to him, Ya bunay, O my son, إذا دخلت على أهلك فسلم. If you were to enter upon your your, your, your spouse's house, ahlika, your, wherever you live, your family, um, say assalamu alaikum, yakun barakatan alayk wa ala ahli baytika. This will be a blessing for you and a blessing for your family. Again, from the sunnah is to enter a house, your house, and to say assalamu alaikum. Even if there's no one in there, you still greet and say assalamu alaikum. Right? You're greeting the angels. طيب. <coughs> Then there comes another mas'ala, another matter that, we've, that we need to mention is if you're knocking on someone's house and whether they're there or not and you peek through their window, all right, is this from Islamic manners or not? No, of course not. This is not from Islamic manners. In a hadith, the messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, he tells us, لو أن رجلا اطلع عليك بغير إذن If a man sneak peeks at your house, your window, and he sneak peeks, right? فحدفته بحصات And if, if you were to throw a rock on him, a slingshot, or a rock, right? And you took out his eye, فلا جناح عليك ما كان عليك جناح أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام In this instance, you're allowed to throw something at this individual. And there will be no issues. All right? If you were to throw, take someone's eye out, that's a big sin. Not even that. 
you have to pay a deer. You have to pay blood money. And the blood money, according to some madhabs, is 50 camels. 50 camels. And the camels nowadays are roughly about 1,000 USD to 3,000 USD, depending on the market. Let's just say 3,000 USD. Times that by 50. 150,000 USD. If you convert that to Australian dollars, that's nearly half a million or over. So half a million for taking someone's eyes out. All right? Um, Amdan, whether it's deliberate or whether it's not deliberate. Okay? That's the penalty in the Sharia, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the Islamic um, legislation. So, but in this case, if someone was to sneak peek in your house and you threw something at him and, he's, and, you, took, and you took his eye out, then it is fine. There's no problem. There's no issue or sin against you. All right, this goes to show the seriousness of peeking into someone's window, um, of knocking into someone's house, or entering it without their permission. Wallahu alam, and Allah is best. Athalif, Samillah, fi ibtidai aklika wa shurbika qailan, bismillah, wa kul yaminik, wa kul mimma yalik, wa ida faragta falak, a sabiak, a sabiaka, wa kul alhamdulillah. Say Bismillah before you begin eating and drinking. And be sure to eat with your right hand and eat from what is close to you. When you finish, lick your fingers and say Alhamdulillah or praise be to Allah. The third etiquette the author mentions is the etiquettes of eating when we eat and how we should eat. Okay, we all love eating, don't we? And we all eat enough. Or we should eat enough just to get by and not overeat. All right. And how many meals do we have in a day? Three? Four? More? Five? Six? MashaAllah, we've got some heavy eaters here. So, one third, one third. That's it. One third for the stomach, one third for the air, and one third for the drink, right? طيب. So when we're eating, the author says, سَمِّ اللَّهَ فِي إِبْتِدَاءِ أَكْلِكْ وَشُرُبِكَ قَائِلًا بِسْمِ اللَّهِ we begin again by saying Bismillah. We begin by saying Bismillah. What happens if we don't say Bismillah? The shaitan is eating with us. That's it. There's no barakah in that food. You probably feel hungry the next half an hour, even if you've eaten a, a plate the size of this. There's no barakah in that whatsoever. Okay? And again, I mentioned last week that... There is an athar or statement of the back that goes back to the companions that they mentioned that the shayateen when they come together and they come together and we don't see them when they come together. One is overweight, one is obese, and one is skinny. One is very skinny, all right, to a point where he's about, he's about to die, anorexic. And they greet each other and they ask each other, what have you done today, what have you done today, why are you looking like this? The one that is very fat and obese, he says... The slave, the servant of Allah, he forgot to say Bismillah. So I've eaten with him as well, all throughout the day. And he's also clothed as well. Because when you put on your clothes as well, you're supposed to say Bismillah. From the Sunnah is to say Bismillah. Right? And he says, I've got all these clothes, and I'm wearing his clothes as well. Okay? Whereas the skinny one, and he also says, the fat one also says, and he used to also eat with his left hand. And we'll come to that in a sec. The skinny one would say, the servant of Allah, he would always mention Allah before he would eat and drink. And I'll have no share of his food. Even my brothers and sisters, when you drop a food, when you drop a piece of food that you're eating, you're supposed to pick it up. All right? You're supposed to pick it up and wipe away whatever dirt it's on and eat it, not leave it for the shaitan. Okay? Then the author says, wa kul bi yaminik, and eat with your right hand. Eat with your right hand. And this is something that we've seen on a daily basis. Many Muslims, subhanAllah, they tend to forget and just drink and eat with their left hand. All right? Sometimes no difference. Sometimes you can't even tell the difference between them and those that work around them. Those that are non-Muslims. Eating and drinking with their, right, with their left hand. Unless you're disabled from the right hand, my brothers and sisters, you cannot eat with your left وَكُلْ مِمَّا يَلِيكَ وَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَلْعَقْ أَصَابِعَكَ وَقُلْ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ And when you're eating in a group, again, this is from the sunnah to eat in a group, 
um, you should eat that which is in front of you. And when you've, when have you, and whenever you've finished eating, you should lick your finger that you've used the most, and also say Alhamdulillah, and also say Alhamdulillah. Now there are manners before and manners during and manners after eating. Before eating, we hasten towards eating. We hasten towards eating. Whenever the food comes, we don't sit there and watch the food and wait for the food to cool down or wait for the food to, to disappear or for the food to eat us or to take a picture or whatever it is. We sit there and we eat the food. We hasten to eat the food. Okay? And then we say Bismillah. And when you forget to say Bismillah, as soon as you remember, mention Allah's name. Say Bismillah, awwaluhu wa akhiruhu. Or say Bismillah, fi awwalihi wa akhirihi. Both have been narrated upon by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the, 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 the etiquettes of eating during is to sit down. To sit down when drinking and eating. To sit down when drinking and eating. And to allow the food to digest as well. And, and again, this is, uh, research has, tol has told us that it is more healthier and it's better to, to eat while sitting down because standing up, it may impact the digestion. And this is what research has found out. I don't know how long, but our Prophet Sallallahu told us this a thousand, over a thousand four hundred years ago. Okay. And then the manners after. The manners after eating is that you should lick your fingers if you're eating with your hands. And the sunnah is to eat with these three fingers, these three fingers, um, your middle finger, your index, and your thumb, those three. Um, and you should wash your hands after eating, and you should say, Alhamdulillah, that's the easy dua that everyone knows. And the other duas are, Alhamdulillah, alladhi at'amani hada wa razaqnihi min ghayri hawli minni wa la quwa. Alhamdulillah, alladhi at'amani hada We've mentioned this last week. Did anybody revise and memorize this dua? Or has memorized it before? Yeah, we've all have, yeah, inshallah. طيب. Then there's a third dua. Alhamdulillahi kathiran tayyiban mubarakan fih. Alhamdulillahi kathiran tayyiban mubarakan fih. Ghayra makfiyin wala muwadda'in wala mustaghnin anhu rabbana. Alhamdulillahi for those who can write Arabic and who are fast writers. Alhamdulillahi kathiran, tayyiban, mubarakan fih, ghayra makfiyin, wala muwadda'in, wala mustaghnin anhu rabbana. So you're saying, Alhamdulillah, all praise is due to Allah. This cannot be compensated, nor left, nor it can be done without our Lord. And Alhamdulillah, my brothers, it is the highest form of praise. al thanau fi dua and it means that you're attributing complete, you, att you attribute completeness to the one who's deserving of all praise, coupled with love and glorification. That is what Alhamdulillah means. So whenever you say Alhamdulillah, you're attributing complete, completeness to Allah, the one who's all deserving, coupled with love and glorification. All right? And this is a beautiful dua. Alhamdulillah is a, du a dua as well, that we should constantly and and constantly say and constantly do. <coughs> Naam. All right. The fourth etiquette. Al-Rabi' Takallam bi tayyib al-qawli fi khayr Waqfid sawtaka mutamahilan fi hadithik Wansit liman kalimak Muqabbilan alayhi Wa la tuqati'hu Wa la tataqaddam bayna yaday al-akbari bil kalam Speak with good words and of what is best. Lower your voice. Speak carefully and deliberately. Listen to those who speak to you, fully face them, do not interrupt them, and do not speak before your elders. طيب, the, fourth, the fourth etiquette, which, which, we, which is where we've left off last week, is to speak. The first is to speak good, good speech, to speak good words. Uh, not just good words, that, that which is best. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he commanded Bani Israel, the Jews and the Christians at the time of Musa alayhi salam and Isa alayhi salam وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ حُسْنًا and speak that which is well to the people and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us as Ummat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the nation of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we are better than them because Allah mentions He says وَقُلْ لِعِبَادِي يَقُولُوا الَّتِي 
أحسن وقل وقل لعبادي يقول التي هي أحسن alright and tell my believing servants to say that which is best so he told them to speak well but now Allah subhanahu wa taala is telling us to speak that which is best to speak that which is best and speech my brothers is of three types speech is of three types one is good speech kalam al khair good speech that we are encouraged to speak and we are and it's and it's um, from the sunnah to speak well uh, the messenger alayhi salatu wasalam mentions man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir falyaqul khairan aw liyasmut the one that believes in allah and his last day and his prophet let him speak well or remain silent again this is a negation of iman so the higher your iman is the more accurate you speak and you speak well and you speak good words and the lower your iman is the more you don't speak well and you use bad words the second type of speech is evil speech all right kalamun shar evil speech and this is this this is uh disadvised and discouraged and this is not liked and then the third is kalamul laghu non beneficial speech it doesn't reach it's like in between those two non beneficial speech speech that has no good to it or just speaking without any faida without any benefits all right and the believer is commanded to do the first one to speak well or to remain silent um the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was asked um Aisha radiallahu anha and those that used to live with him, his, his, um, his wives were asked about his character. And they said about him that مَا كَانَ عَلَيْهِ سَلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ مَا كَانَ فَاحِشًا وَلَا مُتَفَاحِشًا وَلَا صَخَّابًا فِي الْأَسْوَاقِ وَلَا يَجْجِي بِالسَّيِّئَةِ السَّيِّئَةِ وَلَكِنْ يَعْفُوا وَيَصْفَحْ He was not someone who would indulge in wicked acts and he was not someone who would speak uh, wickedly and say wicked things all right and he was not someone who used to yell sahaban fil aswaq he would not yell in the markets all right i don't know if you guys have been to victoria market vic market or if it's still like that until now they used to yell back in the days four dollars four dollars four dollars four dollars for onion and they used to yell so loud and you get a thousand people yelling and also on youtube um the place that i mentioned last week um speaker's corner Speaker's corner, all right? Speaker's corner, the debate, the person that wins is the person that's the loudest, the one that shouts, all right? They're not even debating properly half the time, or majority of the time. They're just yelling and yelling and yelling. All right, this is something that it is advised against. And Luqman al-Hakim, Luqman al-Hakim, who's, there's a whole surah dedicated to him, alayhi salam, he used to advise his son a couple of things. And he used to say, Ya Bunayya, aqim salah Oh my son, establish the prayer. Establish the prayer. And this is the evidence that the people that came before us used to pray as well. Some of them used to pray in a different way or longer. Fifty prayers rather than five. So he used to advise his son, Ya Bunaya Aqimis Salah, Wa'mur bil ma'ruf. And enjoin what is right. Enjoin what is right. Command to that which is good. Wanha anil munkar. And forbid what is wrong. Right? Forbid what is wrong. Um, and be patient over what befalls you and be patient over what befalls you and we've mentioned last week again that patience my brothers is on three levels all right yes there's there's three levels to patience um the first one is that you're patient upon worshiping allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as-sabru ala ala ta'atillah you're patient upon being obedient and worshiping allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Waking up early on time of, for Fajr, coming to the mosque, you know, from your nice warm bed, making wudu, and then walking to the masjid, or driving to the masjid for those that drive, and then praying, um, and then listening and, and listen attentively to the imam while he's reciting. And also fasting as well, fasting during Ramadan, and those that fast outside as well, uh, doing hajj, doing umrah, giving zakah, giving charity, these are all noble acts uh, that it makes a person obedient, that they should be patient upon and seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's reward. And the second type of patient is that you're patient upon leaving sins. You're patient upon leaving sins. Whatever sin that you have that is bothering you, 
You might watch a particular thing or you might do particular things with your hands or you might go to a particular place with your foot. All of this you should seek, seek Allah's du'as, seek Allah's uh, assistant, make du'a to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, that he makes it easy for you and due time inshallah you will live off the sins. And the third and last type and this is the hardest and this is of course out of our control. This is the divine this is the divine decree. As sabru being patient upon the divine decree. As sabru ala aqdarillah. And things that are out of your control such as deaths and accidents and losses as well. Maybe you put your money into a, the wrong business. Okay? Um, maybe you've been into a car accident. And that same car accident maybe was perhaps while you were driving towards Fajr prayer. And that, and that and then your car becomes a write off. So what are you gonna do? It wasn't necessarily your fault, you were on speed. Maybe the person, the other guy was speeding, and then he alas crashes your car and your car's all gone. So what are you gonna do about it? You're gonna get mad, you're gonna lose your temper, you're gonna go in a road rage, road rage. Are you gonna um, lose your cool just because of this? No, you have to seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's reward and be patient upon it, and inshaAllah ta'ala, this will be something better for you. Then the author says, after speaking well, وَخْفِذْ sautak, Lower your voice. Lower your voice. Um, do not always be the one who always shouts and yells just to try and prove a point across. All right? Speak with humility. Lower your voice. Speak with calmness. <coughs> um, again, Luqman al-Hakim would advise his son, he will say, uh, right? Do not turn your cheek in contempt towards people. Okay, do not do weird things with your faces. And do not walk through the earth arrogantly. In Allah la yuhibu kulla muhtal in fakhur. Allah does not like those who are muhtal and fakhur. Muhtal is the one that الذي يتكبر بفعله فخور الذي يتكبر بأقواله بقوله the one that is arrogant with his actions and the one that is arrogant with his words and then he also says واقصد في مشيك في مشيك واغضض من صوتك إن أنكر الأصوات لصوت الحمير and be moderate in your pace whenever you're walking be moderate whenever you're walking walk moderately um and lower your voice again. And indeed, those Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a parable of those that always shout. They say they are like the, it's like the voices of a donkey. Those that shout the most, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them an, an example that they, they are like voices of donkeys. Um and listen to those who speak to you. Listen to those who speak to you. Al-insat, there's al-insat in, Arab, in Arabic language, and al-istima'. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, فَإِذَا قُرِئَ الْقُرْآنُ فَاسْتَمِعُوا لَهُ وَأَنصِتُوا When the Qur'an is being read, listen to it, istima', listen to it attentively. Alright? وَأَنصِتُوا and be quiet. Give it your undivided attention. And over here, the author is saying, when somebody is speaking to you, speak well, lower your voice. And when a person is speaking to you, give them your undivided attention. And this is something the Messenger of Allah used to do. He wouldn't turn their backs on someone when they're speaking to them. Right? He would face them squarely, standing up. Or if they're sitting down, he will sit down. He would lower his voice. And he would face them. And he wouldn't cut them off. Alright? Some of us, we like cutting people off. Okay? Let the people say, let the people have, get their point across. All right, and if there's young kids, let them just talk and listen. Perhaps it is better for them. Perhaps they'll say when they're older, my father used to listen to me, or my mother used to listen to me, or used to hear me out. All right? Because a lot of kids complain that their fathers and, and mothers don't listen to them and don't hear them. وَلَا تَتَقَدَّمْ بَيْنَ يَدَيِ الْأَكْبَرِ بِالْكَلَامِ And do not speak before your elders. Do not speak before your elders. And this again, it is from the manners and respect to our elders. Let's go on to the next. Al-Khamis. 
إذا أتيت مضجعك فتوضأ ونم على شقك الأيمن واتلو آية الكرسي مرة واجمع كفيك واقرأ فيهما سورة الإخلاص والمعوذتين وانفث فيهما وامسح بهما ما استطع ما استطعت من جسدك تفعل ذلك ثلاثا When you come to your place of sleep at night, make wudu. Before you sleep, sleep on your right side and recite Ayatul Kursi once. Place your hands together and recite them. Uh, recite in them Surah Al-Ikhlas and Al-Mu'awwidatayn, Surah Al-Falaq and Al-Nas. Then blow into them and wipe what you can of your body with your hands. Do this three times. Fine. Then the author goes into the etiquettes of sleeping or the manners of sleeping. Um... We all love, you know, to visit friends or visit people. We've talked about the manners of visiting and greeting one another. And we all love to eat, don't we? And we all love to sleep. All right? Who, who doesn't like to sleep? How many hours do we sleep a day? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten? All right? The average person, they say, needs about six or seven hours to operate. All right? Six or seven hours to operate. And, again, um, it is... Um, it is from it is from the sunnah to always little our sleep <coughs> and maintain and contain our sleep that we don't sleep too much and at the same time we leave ourselves enough energy for us to operate and give our due rights to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right from the, from the sunnah and the best of sunnah is the sunnah of Dawood alayhi salam he would sleep a third of the night and that he would sleep uh, a part of the night and the other part, he will, he will spend it reciting um, and praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he would fast day on and day off. He would fast day on and day off. طيب. So then again, the author, he says here, إِذَا أَتَيْتَ مَضْجِعَكَ فَتَوَضَّعَ When you come to your place of sleep at night, make wudu before you sleep. And this is a normal wudu as you would, as you would do when you're praying. Normal wudu as you would do when you're praying. And then again, my brothers and sisters, we all complain about nightmares and having bad dreams and not sleeping well. If we were to stick to the prophetic tradition and sleep early and do these things, I guarantee you it will solve a lot of our sleeping problems. Making wudu at night. That is number one. Right? Sleep on your right side. Sleep on your right side. To begin with, you can sleep on your right side, but if you end up on the left at night, it's fine. But to begin with, from the sunnah, it's to sleep on your right side. And the scholars mention many benefits of sleeping on the right side. They say that um, the food will be stabilized in the stomach, uh, as opposed to the one who sleeps on their left, because the heart is on the left as well. You don't want to you know, put a lot of pressure, uh, a weight on the heart. Um, and then again as well the stomach in such a way leans on the liver when you sleep on the right then one should turn again to sleep on the left side of, uh, of the food quickly they say that one should you know turn left and turn right if they can uh, in order to digest the food but if you've already digested the food then alhamdulillah all right um, then he says watlu ayat al kursi marratan watlu ayat al kursi marratan and recite Ayatul Kursi just once. Recite Ayatul Kursi just once. Ayatul Kursi, my brothers and sisters, um, chapter number two, verse number 255. Ayatul Kursi. It is an ayah that we should all learn, memorize, and apply, and also teach those around us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allahu la ilaha illahu al hayyul qayyum, la ta'khuduhu sinatun wa la nawm. لَهُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يَشْفَعُ عِنْدَهُ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِهِ يَعْلَمُ مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَمَا خَلْفَهُمْ وَلَا يُحِيطُونَ بِشَيْءٍ مِنْ عِلْمِهِ إِلَّا بِمَا شَاءَ وَسِعَ كُرْسِيُهُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَلَا يَؤُودُهُ حِفْظُهُمَا وَهُوَ الْعَلِيُّ الْعَظِيمُ Okay, one of the greatest ayahs in the Quran. It is the greatest ayah in the Quran. What is the greatest surah in the Quran? <coughs> surah Fatiha. Surah Fatiha is the greatest surah in the Quran. Right. طيب. What is the last ayah in the Quran? Yes. The last verse. The last verse to be revealed.
Sorry to put you on the spot. Anyone want to help a brother? Yep. Either Jaya and Rasulullah al Fatih? No. No. There's a stronger evidence than that. Yep. Hmm? In Surah Maida? Um, no. That is not the last ayah. Aliyama akmanatul akum dinakum? No, that's not the last ayah. Yep. Surah Nasr, the brother already said. Anyone else? Surah Baqarah. What's the verse? What is it? You gotta say it. Verse 281. Who knows the verse? This is the last ayah. Verse number 281, as our brother said, and he's going to confirm that. That is the last ayah to be revealed. The last ayah that was brought down to the Prophet. And he died after that. The last ayah that he announced in the khutbah al the last khutbah he gave, was the ayah that our brother mentioned. Um, that today I've perfected your religion and I've bestowed my favors upon you. But that wasn't the last verse to, revealed, to be revealed. The last verse to be revealed was, fihi Fear a day that you will return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kullu nafsin, and then every soul will be taken away. Every soul will die. And every soul will be recompensed, will be rewarded. That which the good that they have given and they will be held accountable for the evil that they have I'm um, done. طيب. Ayatul Kursi, the greatest ayah in the verse in the, in the Holy Quran, and it has a whole, it has a whole story to it. The story is found in Sahih Muslim, reported by Abu Hurairah radiAllahu anhu, that he was um, he was given um, the duty to hold the zakah, as he says here, وَكَلَنِي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ بِحِفْظِ زَكَاهِ. I was given the job. The duty to look after the zakah of the Muslims in Ramadan. فَأَتَانِي آتٍ And then someone or something came to me. Right? And this person kept taking the zakah, the food. They kept eating the food. And it kept decreasing. Until Abu Huraira caught this, this individual. And this individual says, says that I am poor. أنا محتاج وعلي عيال وبي حاجة شديدة. I'm a poor person, I'm in need, I'm, I'm in need. I'm in, I have a lot of needs, and I have kids. So he let him go. And then he also said, I will also take you to the Prophet Sallallahu I will inform the Prophet Sallallahu He informed him, and then day two he did the same thing. And day two he said, I'll take you to the Prophet Sallallahu So he took him, and then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, let him go. And then day three he did the same thing, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi asked Abu Hurairah, what did you do with that man? And then Abu Huraira said, I let him go again. And then the Prophet ﷺ informed him to say, to read Ayatul Kursi. Read Ayatul Kursi, and this person or this thing will disappear. And that person happened to be a shaitan. A shaitan that came in a form of a person. And we all know that whenever we read Ayatul Kursi, all right, um, knowing this hadith, it also gives us a protector. لا يزال عليك حافظ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send to you, a person that is a hafid, an angel who is a protector. So we want to read Ayatul Kursi before we sleep. We want to read Ayatul Kursi before or after every salah, as narrated in the Sunnah, for Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to protect us. <coughs> and also, my brothers, it is from the Sunnah to recite Ayatul Kursi whenever you, whenever you are in your house, whenever you are in your house. Okay, at least a day in your house. Because then again, the shaitan flees from a person that reads Ayatul Kursi and a person that reads Surah Al-Baqarah in general. Surah Al-Baqarah in general. All right? We've complained about many things that happen in our house, many evil things. So these are the things that will help us, help our house spiritually and help our house get better. And also, my brothers, Ayatul Kursi, it contains Ismullah Al-A'zam. It contains the greatest of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names. All of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names are great. But the greatest of the greatest names is contained there. And the greatest names of Allah is Allah and al Hay and al Qayyum. Allah, al Hay and al Qayyum. Alright? Allah, Allah, al Hay, al la yamut, the one that is everlasting. 
Al-Qayyum, Al-Qa'imu ala shu'uni khalqihi. The one that who sustains and protects all that exists. And you find these three uh, words only in three verses in the whole Quran. In Ayat uh, Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayat Kursi, in the first verse, or the second verse of Surah Al-Imran, Allahu la ilaha, Alif la meem, Allahu la ilaha, illa huwa al-hayu al-qayyum. And you also find it in Surah Taha. وَعَانَتِ الْوُجُوهُ لِلْحَيِّ الْقَيُّومِ وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ حَمَلَ ظُلْمَا um, And it is also from the sunnah to make dua using these names as well. Whatever issue that you have, whatever burden that you have, whenever you're making dua, raise your hands and say, Ya Allah, Ya Hayyu, Ya Qayyum, and then begin your dua. O oh Allah, the everlasting, O oh Allah, the one who sustains and protects all that exists, help me in my affairs. Oh Allah, ease my burden, etc., etc. Then the author says, Wajma kafeka, um, and place your hands together. Wajma kafeka, and recite Waqra fihima Surat al-Ikhlas wal Muawwidatain. One futh fihima, one sahbihima mustatat min jasadika taf'al dalika thalathan. Again, this is from the Sunnah of going to sleep. Before sleeping, making wudu, reciting ayatul kursi, placing our hands together, and reciting, "Qul huwa Allahu ahad, qul a'udhu bi Rabbi al-Falaq, and qul a'udhu bi Rabbi al-Nas," and then dry spitting and wiping it on yourself. Right? Wa msah bihi mustatat min jasadika, wherever you're able to do it. Okay, your face, your hands, your your feet, etc. Do that each time. Three times. And then wipe. And then again. And then, and then dry spit and then wipe. And then the third time, like that. So doing that three times. There are other there are other Sunnah acts, many other Sunnah acts. We'll just mention a few. And for the brothers that want to benefit us as well, they can say ones that I've missed out or I haven't mentioned. Um, from the Sunnah Acts is that you um, recite, also recite the last two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah. The last two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah, Amen al-Rasulu and La yukallifullahu nafsan. Amen al-Rasulu, La yukallifullahu nafsan. From the Sunnah is to also recite, uh, recite Surah Al-Mulk. Tabarak al biyadihi al-Mulk. Because the one that recites Surah Al-Mulk, and he happens to pass away and die that night, then he'll be protected from the adab of which adab? The qabr, the grave. You'll be protected from the grave. Now. Uh, it's makro. Is it haram to sleep in your stomach? It's not advised to sleep on the stomach. It is not advised to sleep on your stomach. So it is sunnah to sleep on the right side. Uh, but if you have a pain or you're forced to sleep on your stomach, then it is okay. And if you end up on your stomach, then it is fine. But from the sunnah is to sleep on your right side. And to to say, also say this dua, um, Allahumma inni aslamtu nafsi ilayk, wa fawadtu amri ilayk, wa aljaatu dhahri ilayk, uh, la malja'a wa la manja illa ilayk, amantu bi kitabika alladhi anzalt, wa bi nabiyika alladhi arsalt. So memorize this dua, my brothers. I've memorized it. Many of us have memorized it. But, you know, have this have a particular dua that you can always recite before you go to sleep and to stay protected. It is also from the Sunnah to read Surah Sajda, Surah Al Sajda, the whole Surah. And it is also Sunnah to read Surah Al Isra, parts of it, to read to read parts of Surah Al Isra before going to sleep. And there are many du'as that you can read. Bismika Allahumma amutu ahya. You can also recite Bismika Rabbi wa da'atu jambi wa bika arfa'hu fa in amsat nafsi farhamha wa in arsaltaha fahfadha bima tahfadu bihi ibadika salihin. So all these du'as are compiled in a single book, in Arabic and in English. And that book is called The Fortress of the Muslim, Husn al-Muslim. So a Muslim should have this constantly, have it with you. All right? If you've memorized the book and memorized the du'as, even better. But always have it with you and recite it before you go to sleep. And there's also the du'as or the sunnah of waking up. Waking up as well. Waking up. When waking up, the Messenger وسلم, used to, he used to wake up and it is from the sunnah to, as soon as you're up, to leave the bed. 
to throw away the blanket and as if you're turning quickly and jumping off, but in a subtle way. That is from the sunnah. And it is also sunnah to wipe your face when waking up, to wipe your face and to say, Alhamdulillah, alladhi ahyana ahyani ba'dama amatani wa ilahi nushur. Oh Allah, all praises and thanks be to Allah for the one who's given me life after death. And we know that we, the death is minor, uh, sleep is minor death, that our souls have been taken away while we're asleep. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us permission to wake up again and to breathe. How many people die in their sleep? So recite these du'as by saying, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, Alladhi ahyani ba'dama amatani wa ilayhi nushur. And also reciting um, uh, the last few verses of Surah Al-Imran. Inna fi khalqi samawati wal ardi wa ikhtilaf al-layl. This is from the sunnah of waking up and making wudu and walking to the masjid or praying first thing that you do. If you've missed a prayer, you should pray. Okay, you don't sit and lie in your bed. You, don't, you shouldn't wake up to your phone to check how many likes or how many comments that you have on your last post or to check your reels or what you've missed out on. Because if you check your TikTok or Instagram reels, then you'll be in your bed for another hour because that thing won't stop. Right? And you don't wake up calling people. Right? Straight away, you should wake up, make wudu, say the du'as, make wudu, and go and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remember him during the day, during the, uh, early as you wake up and remember him when you sleep. And the one that prays, man salla subha, and in another narration, man salla subha fi jama'ah, the one that prays salat subh fajr prayer in jama'ah, fahuwa fi dhimmatillah, he's under the protection of Allah. And we want to be under the protection of Allah constantly by doing these minor things, small things, small words, small du'as, and we can be under the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah, we'll continue uh, number six and seven next week, bi ta'ala. Wa akhiru da'awana, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wa jazakumullah khairan.